Sioux Falls. Thanks for joining us for planning preview for the month of December 2021. I'm joined today by Jason Bieber with the city of Sioux Falls. How are you today, Jason? I'm doing great. Good. Say, uh, I know we just recently announced some big news. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about it a little bit. Tell us about uh, the record we just set in Sioux Falls. Yeah, so we broke the billion dollar construction valuation record, which is a record for us by about 130 million. Um, last year we did 870 million. So yeah, we're pretty excited. We're, we still got a little while to go before the end of the year and we're already over a billion dollars. So it's an exciting time. Yeah, how fun is that? And it just shows how busy everybody's been in property this year, but especially your office, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, and it's just one little quick stat is, I was looking there, is Omaha's all-time record is just over a billion dollars that they set last year. So just to keep that in perspective that we're doing pretty pretty on tap with what they're doing and they're five times as big as we are. So that's kind of how, how much we're doing here in Sioux Falls, it's amazing. That's fascinating. And if you ever just want to uh, actually prove to somebody the growth that we have, that's the stat you need right there. It's Absolutely. the only thing you need, yep. unbelievable. Well, uh, uh, with that, we of course have mm -hmm. a full agenda for the last month of the year. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about some of the items that will be coming up on our uh, meeting on December 1st. First one is a rezone from the MH Manufactured Housing District to the RT1 Single Family Residential Traditional District. That's located at 2508 to 2809 North Bentgrass Court. So a little bit north of Jefferson High School. Yep, so this is kind of a development that CCOG has been doing for quite a while. Um, really doing a mixture of kind of governor's houses up in there, okay. and then also uh, the option to move some houses if there's some available that are close. But this is just uh, some of these existing lots that are still there that are that are vacant, have some floodplain challenges. So this will give them a little bit more flexibility to take that rear yard setback from 25 down to 10, and then some of the front yard to push them forward to really uh, be able to let them utilize that lot and not get in that special flood hazard area where there can be a whole bunch of other restrictions in there. So. Okay, very nice. We certainly are doing a lot of projects up in that part of town right now. Yep, and these are these are some as the mayor's big initiative to, to do some more accessible housing projects up there and pretty much all over the city, so it's a good use of that property. So Yeah, very nice. Next on our list is a rezone from the S1 General Institutional District and RD1 Twin Hound Home Duplex Residential Suburban Districts over to the C2 Commercial Neighborhood and Streetcar District. That's at 5055 East Grant Street. So uh, just uh, off of Arrowhead Parkway on the east side? Yep, just kind of south of that new climbing, uh, indoor climbing place and then also the outdoor volleyball court center over there. Okay. And so this is just some kind of remnant property. It's old railroad property. I think there's an old house that was recently purchased and, and demolished and just trying to get that zoned all to C2 and then kind of put them together for some future development over there. So Okay, so almost a little bit like a cleanup project yep. kind of thing. Yep. Okay, very good. Uh, next on our list is a rezone from the RD2 Residential Suburban Townhome District to the RS single family residential suburban and RD2 twin home duplex residential suburban district. That's at 5100 East 69th Street, so southeast part of town here. Yep, just, just doing, uh, getting as we get moving forward and Veterans Parkway is starting to get announced and starting to, to come through there and then we finish 69th Street um, over to Sycamore. So really this area just getting a little bit more honed in on what they're actually going to construct there. Uh, we're planning on some townhomes, but now it sounds like it's going to be more twin home single family um, with that specific rounding subdivision. So Okay, sounds good. Next we have a rezone from the RD2 Residential Suburban Townhome District to the RA1 Apartment Residential Low Density District. That's at 6301 East 33rd Street. So east side of town, uh, kind of by Dolly Farms? Yeah, and just east of Veterans Parkway on 33rd Street. And okay. this will actually just be in the Burns property, kind of northwest of the Ben Rifle School, really uh, adjacent to where they just announced that large apartment complex that we're doing. Okay. Uh, so they had planned on doing townhomes in this specific area, but with the way it was zoned, they were going to be platted separately and sold separately. Uh, now the applicant is coming back in and is still looking to do fourplexes there, but make them rentals instead of for sale. So that's okay. where we have to bump it up one more zoning district. The uses are somewhat similar, but if, if they're not going to be platted separately, we, we feel like that's more of an intensive use, so they need to rezone them. So. Okay, understood. 
Uh, next, we have a rezone from single family residential to RA3 apartment residential, high density, and some recreational district as well. That's located at 2201 Old Yankton Circle, 57th and Western area. Yep, so this is the south side. If you kind of look back in there, there's a church in, th in that area, um, south of 57th Street and just west of the, or east of the trail that goes underneath 57th Street. What they're looking at doing is, is constructing an apartment complex on that specific lot, so. Okay. Next on our list is a rezone from the C3 Commercial Community District to the RA3 Apartment Residential District. That's located at 30801 South Elmwood Avenue. So kind of 49th Street area by the river. Yep, correct. Uh, just kind of south of Best Buy there. So there's an existing office building and they're looking at doing a couple stories on top of that. Some more parking and utilizing it as some senior housing. Uh, that's very close to the an existing active generations um, property. I think is a couple lots down down, so really kind of fits in there and, and really get more uh, places for our seniors to go. So. Yeah, definitely a unique project. We don't see a lot yeah. of uh, building on top of what we already yeah. have in Sioux Falls. Yep. So. Getting more dense is what we like to see. So. Sure, yep. sure. Uh, next on the list is a rezone from C3 Commercial Community District to the I-1 Light Industrial District. That's at 3901 West 59th Street, so kind of southwest of 57th and Louise. Yep, this would be just kind of south of the new State Bridge Hotel over on 57th and Louise area. Uh, Raven's looking actually at doing kind of an, an indoor um, light manufacturing area for, with some of their engineers in the building there, so. Very good. Let's uh, move on to the conditional use permits. So this one, we've got an on-sale alcoholic beverage establishment within 500 feet of a sensitive land use. That's located at 8509 West 26th Street. Uh, so 26th and Ellis uh, looks like close to shenanigans out there. Yep, it would be just the new strip mall, and I'm not sure if they started construction on that yet, but just uh, a strip mall that's going to go just south of shenanigans, kind of in the same parking lot, utilizing the same parking area. Uh, they're looking at doing uh, kind of a casino in that new strip mall. So. Okay, sounds good. Finally today is a PUD initial development plan amendment for Lake Lorraine PUD located at the southeast corner of South Marion Road and West Lake Shore Boulevard. So it looks like it's kind of just the very far northwest corner of the Lake Lorraine area. Uh, let's uh, have you first tell the viewers and remind them what an initial development plan sure. is. Yep, so Lake Lorraine uh, Planned Unit Development is our area, kind of 26 in Marion, um, just south of Lowe's, south of the Ford dealership. Uh, that large kind of commercial, residential area a lot around the lake. Um, so what we do is initial development plans they submit, kind of gives us an idea of, hey, what are they doing for buildings? What are they doing for signs? What are they doing for parking? And really kind of giving us an idea of the entire development, not just each parcel by sure. itself. Um, and so then as time goes on, some of the things may change. Obviously, you don't know exactly what's gonna go there five years down the line. Um, so this particular amendment is, we're looking, they're looking to add some additional residential out there, get some more rooftops to kind of utilize and spur some more retail development. And we had the exciting news that Dave & Buster's is still going forward. Yeah. And then we're looking, they're looking to do an apartment complex in the northeast corner. So really trying to get some more people out there and hopefully that'll start um, to get the ball rolling on some of the restaurants and things that they're looking to engage with the lake, so. Yeah, yeah, what a what a phenomenal startup again yes. to that uh, Dave & Buster's spot. Nobody knew and, uh, and that was the reality of COVID, so great to see that one going again. Yes. That area really seems like it's got some construction going again, doesn't it? Yep, it's really starting to move again. And like I said, this is once this thing gets built out, and if it goes the way that they're still planning on it, and the things we've seen out there so far, really one of probably one of the most unique developments that we're going to have in Sioux Falls. So it'll really be great when you can engage and walk around the lake and go to different retail, different restaurants, everything that you got around there. Yeah, so. it's uh, the new wave of development. Yeah. And everybody loves being a part of that too. Absolutely. So. Well, thanks again for joining us, Jason. Congratulations again uh, to you and the team for getting that billion dollar mark. Fun yeah. stuff. Yeah. And thanks for joining us for the first half of the show. Stick around Sioux Falls. I'm joined by Shannon Austin, uh, Principal Engineer of Transportation with the City of Sioux Falls. She's going to tell us about the upcoming road projects for 2022. Hi, and welcome to today's Maintenance Minute. My name is Seth, and I'm here with Bruce uh, from our office here. We are housing specialists with the City of Sioux Falls. Today, we're gonna talk to you about energy-efficient windows and how to update them. So Bruce, 
Tell me a little, about, a little bit about this window and how we can make this old double hung window more efficient. Well, this is an older window, a wood frame with single pane glass. And an older pane glass like this, single pane, is going to let a lot of cold air into the house. And usually they're a lot looser and the finish around the edges and stuff gets deteriorated and discolored over a period of time just because of the moisture buildup in the winter time. And this is a real easy project to do because uh, you can just refinish this sill. And in most cases you can do that um, to put a new vinyl replacement window in here. It's as simple as pulling these side stops off, taking the old sashes out, get the uh, jam liner out, and then the, a vinyl pocket window will just slide into that opening. Okay. You can take an insulator around the edges, put the stops back on, and you're done. So the new window essentially just sits right into the old frame. Yep. Of jam. Okay. Yep. And then the other question I had for you, uh, this window, I don't know if you can see it, but it has the old storm window on the outside protecting the old style wood window. Is, is there a need for that with the new vinyl windows? No, and actually you can't have a storm window on in a case with a new vinyl because it's going to avoid the warranty. With a storm window on the outside in the summertime, especially a south facing window, the heat buildup is so much there that it can get up to 400 degrees between the panes of glass okay. and that heat will expand the vinyl so much that it will avoid the warranty and probably crack the corners and maybe the glass. All right. Thanks for being here, Bruce. There you go, folks. Windows is the most cost-effective way to keep your home cool in the summer and warm in the winter. If you'd like to see if one of our city programs can help you out, call 367-8180 or check us out online at SiouxFalls.org. Welcome back from the break, Sioux Falls. As mentioned, I'm joined today by Shannon Austin, Principal Engineer for Transportation for the City of Sioux Falls. How are you today, Shannon? I'm good, doing great. Thanks so much for having me today. Good, thanks so much for coming on. As always, our viewers love hearing from you because we love hearing what's coming up in the next year for traffic and mm -hmm. uh, reconstruction projects. But let's take a quick peek back on this last year. How did everything go this season? Well, this season, uh, again, was a stellar year. We had pretty much of a dry season, so when it's dry, we can get a lot of construction work done. Uh, we have a lot of projects that opened up areas um, on the southeast part of the city, had a new street on 69th Street and a new street on Sycamore that opened up an area that had previously been gravel roads and not a lot of, uh, not a lot of traffic. We had Minnesota Avenue, a couple projects on Minnesota Avenue that caused a lot of pain for a lot of our drivers. Those are the project at 33rd in Minnesota is complete uh, and open to full traffic. And then the project on Minnesota from 57th Street to the south is pretty much nearly complete. Uh, the contractor will have some cleanup work in the sum in the spring, but um, certainly there was a lot of projects to keep our drivers attentive to our road construction signs. Yep, there were, but it's so great to hear about the dry weather and getting those things done. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of uncertainty that comes with that. And if they don't get done this year, there's things that gotta be done next year. Right. Which is great, we don't have a ton of those this year. Yep. Uh, but let's uh, go ahead and get into some of those for next year, because it's gonna be another busy year of road projects in Sioux mm -hmm. Falls. So uh, I know first of all on our list is probably my favorite, 41st and uh, 229. Uh, huge engineering feat here with yes. this project. So tell us about it. Yeah, so that project um, will be bid in late December and we will start construction hopefully uh, right away in March or April and it will be a challenge for our drivers for two years. Um, much like our project on 26th Street in the Southeastern was um, a few years ago where it's we have so much traffic that's on 26th Street back then and we'll have so much traffic on 41st Street. We will keep 41st Street open to traffic uh, but certainly understand that there's you know, 30,000 cars that travel through that area, and a lot of those drivers will find another route, uh, but it will be a slow go for, for two years. And so that particular design is called the Diverging Diamond Design, and it's a great, great idea that some engineer designed or came up with, and it really improves the safety on our left turns, because that interchange at 41st and Interstate 29 has so many crashes um, for the left turns getting on and off the interstate. Well, everybody wants to go uh, and get off and go to the commercial area or get back home on the interstate. And so the diverging diamond will help with those left turns by crossing the traffic over on the opposite side and making those left turns a free left. Okay. Now it sounds a little a little crazy and we've, we have been telling folks that if they go to 41 studycom 
Okay. Um, that's our website, and they can watch an animation of how that diverging diamond works. And I've seen it. It's an yeah, amazing video. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think, you know, people that have driven through them, they don't really realize that they're in them. Sure. When they go through them, is, and so it's maybe the animation looks a little bit more, oh my gosh, how am I going to get through there? But once you actually drive through it, it's going to be a, a great addition to that west side. Yeah, that name, Diverging Dive, when everybody yeah. it kind of freaks out, they're like, wow, I, you know, I've never seen this before. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a good thing to remember that while this is a new concept to us, it's not overly a brand new concept uh, nationally. And there's other ones, and we've had mm -hmm. experience with those elsewhere, and they work well. Absolutely. The, the one that a lot of people don't really realize that they're driving through is up by... Uh, the Mall of America, uh, but in the Twin Cities, where there is a there's a diverging diamond that's actually adjacent to the light rail, and so you have a you have a rail crossing, you have an interchange, um, you also have pedestrians, and so it's there's a lot going on, and people don't really realize it, but it is it's a great addition um, to the city of Sioux Falls. In fact, uh, Rapid City also is going to have a diverging diamond that will be open to traffic um, at the end of 2022, I believe, early 23. So we'll have two of them in the city by the time 41st Street is done. Okay, good. And everybody will have a year's experience of going to Chick-fil-A <laughs> before the construction starts, yeah, so that's good. exactly. That's perfect. All right, let's move on to our next one, Arrowhead Parkway. Tell yes. us about that project. So Arrowhead Parkway um, on the east side, and of course we stopped a project a couple years ago at Highline Avenue, and we'll be uh, basically hopping over the intersection of Arrowhead and Veterans and going to the intersection of Six Mile Road and Arrowhead Parkway. Now that intersection's kind of got a bad skew where we've had some crashes and so we are going to realign Six Mile Road to a 90 degree angle. We're going to be scooching that intersection a little bit further to the west and then widening out Arrowhead Parkway to a four lane uh, with median facility oh, about a half mile um, starting at Willow Run about a half mile to the west of Six Mile Road. So okay. a lot of that project Eric is actually off alignment so what that means is we're going to be widening to the north of Arrowhead Parkway, which will allow traffic to still go on Arrowhead Parkway. Um, but of course, there will be times when it have to be closed to traffic. But that project is likely also to be a two-year project, like 41st Street is. Sure. Um, but we will be bidding that after the first of the year in 2022, and it'll be really well received because those neighbors out there, uh, with all the development that, that is happening. The left turns that go to the develop as development as well as the right turn lanes, there's a lot of people that are a little nervous on, on getting rear-ended or getting sure. into crashes. What so. a difference that's going to make oh, for absolutely. those people out there and uh, the traffic that's going out to Willow Run or Brandon or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Uh, it just real small two-lane right now, and mm -hmm. it's it's ready and it's due. That's going to make a big difference. Yeah, it absolutely will. And so that, that particular project used to be uh, South Dakota State Highway 42. And so we've worked really closely with our Department of Transportation. They had turned that over to the city of Sioux Falls a few years ago as part of the DOT turn back agreement. And so um, it's ours uh, to reconstruct, but we're using DOT funds to do okay. it. So, And then um, still to come is the intersection of Arrowhead uh, Parkway and Veterans Parkway, which we anticipate uh, hopefully to get under construction in uh, 2024. And that intersection will be lowered about five feet. And so it'll really look different um, as we go through that area too. So that'll, we wanted to get Six Mile Road done first as the detour route for the larger intersection to come in 2024. Okay, very good. Uh, I was just a little curious, is it normal to bid a project just right before the season starts? Is it that short a timeline these guys can usually get those things ready? And well, yes. Yeah. So we've actually on Arrowhead Parkway, we have been working on that project probably for about five, six years okay. already. So and we've we just recently uh, acquired all of the right of way. The right of way is always the, the most time consuming uh, part or phase of a project. And so because, it's, you know, we have to deal with people and you have to acquire their property. And so a lot of times we don't agree on what that acquisition cost is. Sure. Um, but we always try to work through it with the property owners. So this particular one has been working. We've been working on that for a while. So both 41st Street and Arrowhead Parkway, we're happy to get to get bid out in the next yeah. couple of months. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, next on our list is Sycamore from 26 to 41st Street. Tell us about this project. Yeah, so that project, if that's on our southeast part of the city, that's in my neighborhood. So I okay. will be impacted by that project. Uh, but we won't be reconstructing Sycamore Avenue. We'll simply be a two inch mill and an overlay on Sycamore. 
Okay. But the major improvement for that project will be at the intersection of 41st and, and Sycamore. And for those of you that go to Harmadon Park or uh, go to the High V at 26th Street, there's a lot of traffic that has now started to come from the from the east of Veterans Parkway, and there's a lot of a lot of growth in that area. And so the intersection of 41st and Sycamore, uh, Sycamore will be widened out. Uh, 41st Street will be widened out, and there'll be a median because we have some of those access points that are a little bit too close to the intersection, which has caused some crashes. So um, nothing major except for overlay on Sycamore, uh, but there will be widening on 41st Street, about 1,000 feet back. Okay, the well even that overlay on Sycamore will do a great one yeah. because that's, that's getting a little tired as well, so mm -hmm. that's definitely due to Yes, so. absolutely. Great, let's move to Cliff Avenue, uh, 49th to 57th on Cliff. Yeah, so that one we, ho we had wanted to do before the DOT and the city reconstructed the interchange at Cliff Avenue and Interstate 229. If any of our drivers go through there um, in the PM peak, they have one lane going up the hill because as we have a little bit of a bottleneck between 49th and 57th. Oh yeah, and there so, is, yes. I know very well. And yeah. so we needed to get that second lane uh, southbound. If about 10 years ago we added, we took parking off of the street and added two northbound lanes, letting those property owners know that, you know what, we're gonna have to come back in a few years and get that extra second southbound lane. And so that's what we're doing now. And so we have to widen a little bit closer to the homes, which is taking the trees out in the boulevard. So that'll be a two lane uh, to the north. And then we have to actually add two lanes to the south. So when you're driving by it, there is a drop off on the west side. So we have yep. to work through that definitely the design challenge. Well, there. there's definitely some engineering uh, yes. in that one. <laughs> I know that well. And uh, there, there's just not a ton of room there. So. Right. Uh, uh, bumping that over to the east to get the another lane seems like the right way to go and it's hard to believe it's been 10 years now since I know I was, really done. I was like maybe like four but uh, 10 that's, it's been a while. that's amazing so that's that amazing. that particular project um, will be a, a tough challenge for our drivers because after school gets out in the spring and then before school starts it's likely that we're gonna have to close Cliff Avenue so Entirely. yeah so okay. it's gonna be pretty tough to, to build it without closing it yeah that's uh, that's that's hard but that's yeah. one of those areas there just with the slope off mm -hmm. there, there's not a lot of other ways to get around. Exactly, so, yep. Sure. Um, let's go back to Minnesota Avenue. This one's an exciting one that's been in the works for just a number of years. Mm -hmm. So a uh, big project, Minnesota Avenue, 2nd Street up north to Russell. Yeah, so that project is really going to change the landscape of the folks coming in from the airport as well as the downtown leaving the city. So we're going to, uh, we're moving the on-street parking and we're really trying to bring Minnesota Avenue back to that uh, really a nice corridor instead of just so many lanes and and pedestrians don't feel very safe walking on the sidewalks and so we're going to narrow up that street a little bit and put some trees on and as well as some boulevard uh, landscaping and then uh, put a median in certain areas to prohibit some of those left turns and it's just really going to look different in fact uh, we have a lot of exhibits that we're probably will show on the on the video that it's really going to look different, and it's hard to explain it until you see what we're what sure. we're going to do. And so this is the first phase of about three three in uh, three phases yet to come, and we're hoping to get some great feedback on what it's going to look like. Yeah, uh, it's so much excitement for mm -hmm. that. Uh, just an area that needs a little bit of refreshing yes. on that mm -hmm. road, and it's going to get that. And I think it's going to spur a lot of other things uh, for other developers and commercial, or mm -hmm. or maybe it's even residential people to fix up some of their properties there. I think it's going to be a great start to the Minnesota Avenue change. Yep. Uh, do you do we know yet? Is that stretch there? Is the design going to kind of continue all the way south down Minnesota Avenue, or will it look different in different places? Yeah. So we're we're overall it, we will take off the on street parking, and with that we'll be able to widen the pedestrian facilities on both sides. And in certain areas, we just don't have a lot of right of way to add a median, and so but we'll try to do the best that we can. That that median will likely go as far, almost all the way down to Interstate uh, two two nine. Um, okay. So what well, we just have to, each segment is gonna be kind of depending on how much right away we have. Okay, very good. And uh, high traveled roadway as well. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, do you think, do you anticipate two lane traffic, two way traffic? Well, or? right now we're expecting one lane in each direction. Okay. Again, just to try to keep, uh, but we do have large uh, water main and sanitary sewer that we have to install. So there will be um, a lot of underground utilities with that project. Okay, 
Very good. Let's uh, go ahead and hit on one more here, Phillips Avenue. Uh, so we, we got to hit on the downtown project yes. from uh, 8th to 10th in the 7th Street area as well. Tell us about that project. Yeah, so both of those projects, on, we'll I'll start first with um, the Phillips Avenue project from 8th to 8th to 10th. We have some very exciting uh, aesthetic landscape or landscape architecture improvements that we'll be making along uh, Phillips Avenue while at the same time reconstructing the tired uh, concrete street that's underneath them. And so we've had a lot of water main breaks on that segment and a lot of our downtown folks will know that. Yeah. And so we're gonna replace some water main, uh, sanitary sewer, and then at the same time trying to dress up the corridor a little bit. And it seems like we are always reconstructing Phillips Avenue, but it, there's just certainly different phases. And so this portion from 8th to, 8th to 10th is our kind of our first phase. And then in um, upcoming years, we'll be going um, from 8th all the way to 6th Street. So uh, okay. we do have, we just had a public meeting there a few, a few weeks ago. And so all of that information will be on our website for people to, if they want to see, you know, what, it, what it's going to look like. And then in addition to that, the 7th Street cul-de-sac, which is right by the Ark of Dreams. Okay. Uh, we, we are working with adjacent property owners to get a pedestrian easement on the 7th Street out to the Ark of Dreams. And then in addition to have provide some diagonal parking to allow for more parking there on the cul-de-sac. And then also drep, dress it up again with some aesthetic improvements. So our downtown is such a great feature and everything we do to the downtown, always people are always so receptive of, of yeah. that and how great it looks. And, it is a little painful during <laughs> during construction, but both of those projects are anticipated to com be, be completed this year. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and, and it kind of covers a decent chunk of downtown, yeah, really. Yeah, it does, uh, absolutely. I traveled to one anyway, so that would be awesome to see as well. So yeah. thanks so much for coming in, Shannon. Thank we you for having it. me. And thank you for watching Sioux Falls. Uh, we invite you to come to the Planning Commission meeting on Wednesday, December 1st at 6 p.m. at the Carnegie Town Hall. As always, we'd love to hear from the public and on the agenda items that we discussed earlier, as well as non-agenda items. Thanks for watching.